This is Jeff Cady, Field Applications Engineer at Tektronix in Santa Clara. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to deskew the DSA 8300 electrical sampling module 80E09B. As you can see from my waveforms, my channel 1 and channel 2 are skewed. Let's get started. I'm going to put my scope in the default setup. Before you do any DSKU, you should check the compensation. You click on the thermometer and make sure your mainframe and your modules are compensated correctly. If they're not, you just click the execute button. So let's get started with looking at the channels. I'm going to go to setup vertical, turn channel one on, change the voltage to 50 millivolts per division. Turn channel 2 on, change the vertical scale to 50 millivolts per division. Then I'm going to switch to pattern mode. And then I need to click on the P-Sync button. I'm going to uncheck the data rate and pattern length in the auto sync options. And then I'm going to change my data rate to my 26.5625 gig selection. Click on that number, that line, click OK. And for the pattern length, I have a PRBS11 pattern, so I'm going to click on the 2047 pattern length and then click OK. Now for the clock, I can just click Auto Sync to find my data to clock ratio. Click on the Auto Sync to selected waveform and it finds the 4 to 1 clock ratio. You can see that my pattern is synced. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And you can see the crossing points are not exact, as you could tell from the initial skew seen on the uh, waveforms. I'm going to start off with a course measurement using the cursors, vertical bars. You can just click and drag on the bars to one of the sections. I drag the right one to the yellow waveform there at the crossing point, and then click and drag on the left one and get a measurement. I like to do this course measurement so I, I have a good idea of the correct direction to enter and make sure that my, my value is going to be around that value when I do my fine tuning. I'm going to go ahead and turn those cursors off and then I'm going to enter the delay value in the vertical menu. There's the, the box called delay. This is where you enter the value of the skew that I found in my course adjust. So I'm going to click on the button to enter the value, 18 pico seconds, negative, and click OK. Now you can see the waveform jumped over. Now it's much, much better aligned than it was before I started. Now, now I'm going to go back to the eye mode. And then I'm going to zoom in to 10 picoseconds per division. Now I want to take a look at these two channels, channel 1 and channel 2, separately. So on the left hand side I can click and drag the markers. And I'm going to turn on the waveform database for both of those. Waveform database 1 is channel 1. Waveform database 2, I'm going to select channel 2, turn it on and display it. And you can see there with my, my course adjustment I did, my 18 picoseconds, it's much better than the position I started, but I still need to do the fine tuning now. And we'll... Um, now we'll go over how to do a fine tuning. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the, the database and display of that. Now what I'm going to do is turn my DUT into an NRZ 26G baud. The NRZ signal can be measured, the crossing points, and do the fine tuning. I'm going to recenter my my waveforms, channel 1 and channel 2, 
and I'm going to turn back on the waveform database on these. And now you can see that I have, they're on top of each other. I'm going to measure now the crossing point of each one of these. The t uh, selection you want to pick is NRZ timing, crossing time. Then I'm going to set measurement 2 for the same measurement, which is NRZ timing, crossing time. Now you can see that I've made a mistake. I have channel 1 on both of those measurements. I need to go back and fix that. I'm going to select channel 2 for measurement 2. Now I can look at my measurements of this crossing time and I can calculate exactly the value I need to adjust by where my 18 picoseconds was a course adjust. Now I have my accurate fine adjust and I can just do the math and figure out the value. I'm going to go back and I'm going to enter the value that I have, which is minus 16.4 picoseconds. I'm going to enter that. Now this is my fine tune and I will have a an overlapping crossing point. So I'm going to enter minus 16.4, click OK. I'm going to clear the database edit menu, clear data, just to refresh the measurement data. And as you can see in my values, 31.477, very close. Very close. It's a good deskew. I can turn that measurement off now. And I can turn off the waveform database for, for channel 1 and channel 2. Now I'm going to switch my DUT back into the PAM4 mode. Now I'm back in the PAM4 mode with my DUT. And I'm going to define now the differential channel 1 minus channel 2. So now I have my differential. I'm going to assign that to math 1 waveform. And then I'm going to turn off channel 1 and channel 2 by right-clicking on the left there. And now I have my de-skewed, fine-tuned de-skew of my two channels and I have my math waveform that shows the differential signal coming into the scope and at, and at this point I have a, a signal that's ready to do analysis up on. Now I'm going to show an alternate method using the common mode to find the, the best de-skew point. I'm going to go ahead and turn the database off. Now I'm going to define the common mode signal instead of the differential signal, which is channel 1 plus channel 2. This is going to allow me to find out what the error is in my de-skew. I'm, I'm going to zoom out on the horizontal to 10 microseconds per division to get more data. And then I'm going to adjust also the vertical scale back to 50 millivolts per division. And you can see that this common mode signal is a small, small voltage signal. Now there's a process. I'm going to set up a measurement, which is the ACRMS, NRZ amplitude ACRMS measurement of this, of this math waveform, which is my common mode. And now the process I'm going to use is to enter values in the to enter values in the skew, and I need to find the minimum. And once I find the minimum RMS voltage, that's going to be the fine-tuned de-skew. So, for example, I could go back to my original starting point and enter that one, and I'll clear the data, and now I can see that it's my uh, common mode voltage is higher, so that's not the best position. And then you can go to the other side. You can enter different values here. And once again, this is an alternate 
capability using the common mode for you to find the best the best position. So now once I've done some work on analyzing this common mode measurement, I'm going to go back and I'm going to enter my value where I have the minimum RMS voltage. And that's going to be my position that provides the best DSKU for this PAM4 signal. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to take a look at my resulting differential signal. I'm going to put it back for differential. I'm going to go ahead and turn this measurement off since I'm done with that. I'm going to go back to C1 minus C2. And then I'm going to zoom in back down to 10 picosecond per division. And then I'm going to turn on my, my waveform database and I have a nicely de-skewed electrical signal and, and the secondary method also allows me, I'm ready to go and do some measurements now.